Don't you even think you'd see a guy in a flash shirt talk about a 1943 Japanese film, did you? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show where we criticize film legends based off of their first film, apparently. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. If you're new around here, on Thursdays, it's all about looking to the past. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of cinema's most influential directors and his directorial debut. A couple of years ago, before I dropped out of college, I took a Japanese cinema class for my Japanese studies major. And it was one of the coolest classes I had the chance to take because it introduced me to the world of Japanese films. I've mentioned it before, but I didn't really get into film until a couple of years ago. And so once I started making videos about films and movies, and especially with the creation of Your Everyday Nerd, I wanted to be able to start looking at the entirety of film history because there's so much cinema out there that a lot of YouTubers just don't really cover. With all that being said, when I took this class, I was introduced to the director Akira Kurosawa, who is regarded as one of the most important and influential filmmakers of all time. Kurosawa started in the film industry in 1936 as a writer and assistant director, with his directorial debut, Sanshiro Sugata, releasing in 1943 during World War II. I don't want to get bogged down by the history of all this, because that's not what Your Everyday Nerd is about, but Kurosawa had a very distinct style in his films. Everything from his cuts and transitions, like the wipe and cut on motion, which ended up being staples of film editing, to his brilliant use of directing actors and motion, Kurosawa is an impressive director and writer who also edited all of his films. If you want to see a great video about Kurosawa's movement composition, I highly recommend this video from Every Frame of Painting. Kurosawa directed a total of 30 films throughout his career. I've seen a couple of them, with Ikiru being one of my favorite films of all time, but I wanted to take a look at his career and start from the very beginning, which is why now it's time to talk about Sanshiro Sugata. Unfortunately, Sanshiro Sugata isn't quite a masterpiece like some of Kurosawa's later films, but it is his first, so that's kind of to be expected. This film features Sanshiro, a talented judo student and his path to becoming a judo master. Essentially, this is like a shonen anime, only without power levels and magical elements. Since this is like a shonen, this does make the plot fairly simple. Basically, Sanshiro becomes a student at a martial arts school, but he has his character flaw being that he really likes fighting, uh, but he lacks self-control and demeanor. So there's this entire scene where he's punished by being thrown into a swamp overnight. It's honestly kind of funny. Through this punishment, he learns that there is more to life than just fighting people. After this educational lesson, he becomes the leading student in his school and is sent to represent the school in a public match to determine which city martial arts school is better. He ends up being paired up to fight a much older man who is a jujitsu master, but this master's daughter is this girl named Sayo that Sanshiro ends up liking. By the end of the movie, Sanshiro beats the older man, ends up in a relationship with Sayo, and oh, he also ends up having this duel to the death with some guy named Higaki because Higaki also likes Sayo. I told you, it's it's like a shonen anime. Sanshiro does beat him up too, but he doesn't actually kill him because, you know, then that'd be a sad ending, right? And then the last scene is Sayo escorting Sanshiro to a train where he promises to return. And I think that's where Sanshiro Sugata Part 2 comes in, because yes, there is a sequel. I haven't quite seen it yet. What's interesting about the sequel though is it's the first movie ever made to have a than like the number two in the title. Weird little trivia bit there. The only real problem with Sanshiro Sugata is that it's just basic. The plot is very simple, it's extremely predictable, the actors play their basic roles and aren't really all too complex, but since this is a 1943 film, we have to keep in mind this is kind of expected. What we do end up getting though is a nice coming of age story with some pretty dope fighting sequences that's still kind of worth watching if you have any interest in Kurosawa's history whatsoever. Even though this is his first film, there are still plenty of classic Kurosawa techniques being used. The use of the wipe techniques, weather patterns as a reflection of character moods, and even changing camera speeds. It might not be much now, but this is still a pretty influential film and was even remade by other directors five times. Unfortunately, Sanjiro Sugata is the victim of government censorship, so as far as we know, it could have been even better from what we got. Since this was during World War II, the movie had an entire 17 minutes cut from the original version, and none of this footage was ever recovered. 
If you watch the Criterion version of this film, it even says at the beginning in Japanese that there's an entire 1,845 feet of footage cut in 1944 to comply with the government's wartime entertainment policies. It wasn't really the best film that he made, and honestly, it can even be a little bit boring at times, but there's still enough there if you're interested in Japanese film, or film in general, that I think it's still worth watching. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Patreon. If you've been on YouTube for a while, then you know that tons of creators have their own Patreon. It's a place where you can financially support your favorite creators. Now, I've had a Patreon for a while now, but I'm excited to announce that I have revamped the entire page so that you're not just giving me money, you're also getting a lot in return. I have nine full tiers that range from access to Patreon-only exclusive content to monthly live streams, being able to choose a topic of your everyday nerd once a month, and even a tier that gets you a physical Blu-ray copy of the best episodes of your everyday nerd at the end of the year. My personal favorite is the $7 Your Everyday Nerd streaming package. For only $7 a month, you'll be able to take part in the decision process for the show, get early access to new episodes, access to additional lists, extra reviews, scripts, and behind the scenes, access to a Patreon-only Discord channel, credit in the description and end card of every episode, and finally, launching at the beginning of next month, you'll get access to the new weekly Your Everyday Nerd Companion podcast. Here, I'll go through every episode of the show, talk about the things that didn't make it in the scripts, discuss any additional thoughts or changes in my viewpoints, and even interact with the community by bringing on guests and answering and responding to comments and questions from you guys. I really wanted to make the Patreon more than just a donation platform, so feel free to check out the link in the description box below, check out the different tiers, pick the one that you're most excited about, because this is probably the best way to support your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't, for whatever reason, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what foreign films you think are worth watching. I really want to widen my scope a little bit more. I have a few more Japanese films already scheduled to talk about this year, but the more the merrier. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.